Hi, I'm Beryl, and today's episode are my top five favorite soups from around the world that I have ever made, considering that it's winter and it's cold, or at least it's supposed to be cold. Honestly, it's not that cold in New York. That is neither here nor there. Let's get started. Coming in at number five is a soup from Mongolia. Hi, my name is Holland. I'm from Olamat, Mongolia, and I'm going to explain our most common hangover dish named Banton. Our favorite alcohol is beer, and in the countryside, you will find mainly fermented mare's milk, and it's called Arab. Mostly, there's like two kinds of people instant ramen in the morning or Banton in the morning. That's the two main dishes for hangover for us. It's made of flour, mutton, salt, and some onions. Banton, if you translate it, means mix up, mixture, or something mushy. So you can imagine what it would look like. This dish mainly tastes kind of salty and very fresh and very nurturing because it's soup. It acts also as a baby food, and I would say most people like it because. This is a real representation of our cuisine because there is not that many traditional Mongolian dishes in our culture, but it's really do one of them. This intimidated me to make, but I think that it turned out quite well. I can't believe that I made a stock with bones. <laughs> Oh my god. This is incredible. The flavor is very rich, but rich in like a very comforting way. And the little pieces of meat are nice, but the, the, the part that is so good is that when I was crumbling the flour and the water and making those kind of little tiny granules, it's, it's like a porridge, but each of these little granules has cooked and almost feels like hundreds of tiny little dumplings in your mouth. It is really nice. And the green onion adds this really, really welcoming pop of freshness because the dish itself doesn't really have much going on. It's all just flavor and essence from the meat. So combining it with the green onion just gives this like big pop of like, ooh. When I was shopping, I really could not find mutton. It's not the most common meat to eat in the US. So I substituted it with beef, a very common meat to eat in the US. So obviously the flavor is gonna be shifted slightly, um, but I think mostly what this is about is also about the consistency of the porridge. And I definitely think I nailed that, honestly. As far as a hangover dish goes, I 100% get that as well. It'll like coat your whole stomach, but give you protein and give you carbs to kind of like push through the day. And it is just warm and comforting. I've never attempted to cook Mongolian cuisine before. So this was a really incredible experience. And I just feel like I'm getting so many cool opportunities in doing this YouTube channel of trying things that I don't know how else I would have tried them. And it's awesome. Number four is from China. Hi, my name is T and I live in New Jersey in the United States. My favorite winter recipe is a dish called Chinese oxtail soup, also known as oxtail borscht. It's a tomato-based soup with oxtail bones and assorted vegetables as well as ginger. So my family is from Shanghai, China, and this is a recipe that started from my mother's side of the family um, with my grandparents. They used to go to a lot of the Western-style restaurants, and after trying this dish, they really loved it, and so they decided to adapt it to their own palates. The flavor is savory, with slightly sweet and tart undertones. For myself personally, I like the way the oxtail meat soaks up all of the flavors of the soup and the way it just melts in my mouth. I used to have this dish a lot during long winter weekends or during the holidays, like the reflective and melancholic sort of beauty that comes with winter. And I really enjoy those cozy days that you spend with the runs. Um, you just have something warm. This is a dish that become more of a simple joy. 
with a sense of comfort that it's okay to take a pause and to just breathe. Something that's been a constant throughout my life and I can't imagine you know, not having this dish. Something that I'm definitely going to be passing on um, to my children. Um, yum. My whole house smells so good. I feel like oxtails, either you really, really like them or you don't realize how good they are. Honestly, there was a time when oxtails, you literally like you could get them for free, but then people realized that they were delicious. Mm. Ooh. Oh my God. Ooh, the ginger is so good. The broth is just rich and absolutely delicious. This might be like one of my new favorite soups. And you just have to make it all in one pot. I mean, the first pot that I made it in, <laughs> obviously it was too small, so we had to go bigger. And I have no regrets now that I have so much of this soup. I know I don't really talk about cost of cooking on here, but the ingredients for this are really accessible. It's really not a expensive soup to make, which is really nice. And so you can make a lot of it. Asha, you're snorting so loud. Food with a story for me is, it always just changes the dish itself. You know, in hearing Tiffany's story about her family and her mom and about them adapting this to their culture, I just thought it was so beautiful and it brought the dish alive to me. You know, so when I'm eating this, I'm not just eating soup, I'm also living that story that Tiffany shared. And I love that. Number three is from Iraq. Hi, my name is Ali, and I'm originally from Iraq, but I, come, but I live in Scotland. My absolute favorite thing to enjoy on a rainy day is a Middle Eastern lentil soup called strawberry tahidus. It has turmeric, which gives it a vibrant color, and along with various aromatic spices. It's simple in the ingredients, but complex in its taste. The flavor is rich and mellow, and the texture is creamy and velvety. I usually top mine with a drizzle of olive oil, some cracked black pepper, and a squeeze of lemon. Shorbet Hadis is, is well known by the people of the Middle East. The history of Shorbet Hadis originates in Tel Abu Huraira in Syria where it started off as just water and lentils. 8,000 years later, it is still beloved in the same region of the world. The soup is perfect for a rainy day as it is a definition of comfort food and a warm bowl of soup is all you would want on a miserable day as it is heartwarming and soothing. Rainy days don't bother me much because it, it basically rains in Scotland every other day. But this dish in particular makes every day better. I hope you like it. Okay, lentil soup and Honestly, I love lentil soup. I feel like when I was a kid, I didn't like lentil soup because I always associated it with dark lentils, but I love yellow lentils. <laughs> Why am I using the smallest spoon in the world? Much better. Um, this is absolutely beautiful. It is lemony, and so it feels very fresh, but it's like warm. Very nice. It's kind of similar to Indian dal, only when I make dal, I cook it with water and cooking this with chicken broth, or if you wanted to make a vegetarian vegetable broth, definitely gives it a richness of flavor. Honestly though, it's the lemon and cracked pepper that really is making this 100. It's so good, and this was so easy. 100% going into my rotation. This is so good. This is so good. Also, non-related. Do we need to talk about these? Yes, we do. I'll show a close-up of them. I'm pretty obsessed. They are my new favorite earrings and I wanna wear them all the time. Any other um, Adventure Time fans? Because I'm casually a huge fan. I feel like lentils are one of those things that everybody has their own versions of. And even though I don't know how many ways you can dress a horse, AKA a lentil to make them super different, I feel like I just love all the iterations. <sighs> mm. Okay, next dish. Number two is from Brazil. My name is Pollyanna and I live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. 
Here in Brazil, it really depends sort of on what part of the country you're from when it comes to having some sort of sick food. But it's usually some sort of soup. I actually thought of one of the soups that's in a cookbook that I'm writing. It's about Brazilian foods and foods from different parts of the country. This is a soup that's called caldo de ovos. It's a egg soup from the state of Maranhão, which is in the Northeast. This is a sort of soup that you'll actually find in any little bar in the capital city of São Luís. Um, it's been said to also be good for hangovers, so I guess it's also good for that kind of sick. It has a lot of the ingredients that you would assume that a sick food sort of has, right? At least for, for me. So like there's the egg that I'm used to um, from my, my own upbringing. This has cassava flour. So at the very end of the preparation for the soup, you pour in some cassava flour to thicken it a little bit. And cassava has a little bit of acidity with lime and tomato. Cassava flour will give it that sustenance that you need when you don't feel like getting out of bed. Okay, I have the beef and egg soup from Brazil and honestly, my kitchen smells so good. It kind of smells like chili. Oh my. Oh my God. <laughs> this is so good. It tastes like, honestly, it tastes like, like tangy chili. I have a yolk. Whoa, it's like springy, huh, that's cool. So I was supposed to use cassava flour. I could not find it. I was texting with Polly. She said that cornmeal was an okay substitute. So that's what I've used. It thickens it in an essence that like makes it like, like that. Is that a description? Fun fact, I actually know Pollyanna from high school, we were friends. So I reached out to her because I know that she was making a cookbook and I asked if she would submit a recipe from Brazil for it. And you know, hi. <laughs> that was amazing. Rec I recommend this. And my number one favorite soup that I have made is from Sierra Leone. Hey Beryl, I'm Nikki. I'm from the Netherlands originally, but now I live with my husband and two sons in Sherilyn since 2017. Good. In our house, we normally eat local food and um, granite soup is one of our favorite dishes. Gabriel, who is five, and Akim, who is two, they really love this dish, as you can hear. Do you guys like it? Yes. The soup? Akim, you like granite soup? Granat soup means peanut soup. So peanut soup is prepared all throughout Africa, but it differs per region, east or west, how it is made. We love it a bit spicy in this uh, West African region and with a blend of tomatoes. My husband, he is a Fulani, one of the 16 ethnic groups, and this is one of their main dishes called mafetiga. Therefore, uh, this was one of the first dishes that I learned making uh, when we got married. So peanut soup is eaten as a main meal with rice and chicken or anything else like fish or beef, whatever you prefer. You eat it with either some uh, plantain, you can also put some vegetables in the sauce like carrot and cabbage if you want to hide it from the children. It's simple, but I believe that is for kids uh, really good because that is how they learn to enjoy a certain taste when it's not too difficult with different ingredients so that's why I think the kids really really like it and who doesn't like peanuts I mean all around the world we eat peanuts so I think it is really um, applicable to anybody anywhere in the world and that's why I think everybody should try and, and make it themselves guys how is the granite soup good Good. Good. This was my first time making Sierra Leonese food 
And I've heard a lot about this soup before because I've seen it in other parts of Africa as well, including Ghana. So I am excited to try it. Mmm. Whoa. Oh. If you like peanut flavor, this is really good. Ooh, that chicken is moist. This is awesome. I was a little bit nervous when I started cooking it because the color did not look right immediately. Definitely trust the process. The peanut butter added a lot of color as did the stock when I added that in. I mean, I think it looks really good. You know, the base of this is pretty basic ingredients, but it feels so robust. Like it feels like a complicated dish. I'm, I'm very surprised by it. I really like it. Let's see what our first guest thinks. My name is Casey and I am five. I'm gonna give you a new dish to try. So Casey, you know that this dish has peanut butter in it. What do you think about peanut butter in a dish? Weird. Do you think it's weird? Are you ready to try it though? It's funny. Yes. yes. Tastes good. It tastes good? What does it taste like to you? And it probably with rice and a little bit of crunchiness from the leaves. You know, you were, were you a little bit nervous to try it? Yes. But now, how do you feel? Like it's really yummy. Do you think other kids would like this? Yes, I think they would love it. Do you want to have another bite? Okay, yeah. Do you feel proud that you tried something new? Yes. I'm proud of you for trying something new. It's not easy to try new things. You just take a bite. That's easy. You just take a bite, and then if you like it, you eat it. And if you don't like it, you don't eat it. You get something else you like. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> That's so great. I love that. You did such a good job. If these were good, but you want more inspiration, here is my cozy winter dishes episode for you to watch. And over here, some comfort foods. I will see you all next week.